The last stage of Paris Nice always delivers drama with Primoz Roglic cracking badly in the cold, wet conditions. This is the uh, stage eight. We've seen Roglic crack out of this before. We've seen him win GC on this stage. It's always a cracker. Soler won. Simon Yates lost GC. Medium Mountains Deluxe across 110 kilometers. Almost no flat. Cote de Pay was a hard climb, the longest 7Ks, and the Col de Cata Chemin had the longest steep section, about 8, 9Ks from the finish. To remind you of the GC standings, McNulty, a 4-second slender lead ahead of Jorgensen, 35 seconds to Shkiel Moza, 36 to Avonapol. They were really the only guys in it for the win. And if you want to win your next bike race, if you want to get fitter on the bike, you have to download the Join Cycling app. Free 30-day trial, no credit card required for Lantern Rouge viewers through the link down below. I've been using it for the last two months to get ready for my Flanders trip next week. I'm smashing the cobbles. Go and download the Join Cycling app. But Remco, all to play for still for him. It's not a big margin. Jorgensen, he's got to manage taking the slender time on McNulty if he can with defending from Avonpool. But all smiles in the sun at the start with the two Americans. Campanats was the last guy who stayed away from an early day's breakaway. There was also another crash for Santiago Buitrago. He crashed out of the race with Kevin Genietz. But there were splits on the descent apparently after that crash. So being in good position, incredibly important. Bernal and Gold would be split later in fact you can see them we can't see them but they were apparently chasing in that group whilst Pedersen started to smash lighting the race up before the Cote de Pay you can see Groschartner and McNulty in position Groschartner was the last domestique there for McNulty and these roads are treacherous wet all week and they're narrow twisty there's road furniture because it's a pretty heavily populated area compared to where they often race Cote de Pay 6.5k 7% Remco even a pool attacks Jorgensen straight on his wheel in the white young riders jersey covered up by the gilet and McNulty he responds no problem at this point Vlasov in the wheel Schielmos are there but not looking too sharp Remco stops and so will he go again is Jorgensen going to take over Harper begins to pace just to make it steady because Platt probably doesn't like the accelerations Remco goes again he seems to take Jorgensen off guard on this attempt McNulty straight back in the wheel. Avonapol stops again. Groschartner to the front to keep things under control for Brandon McNulty in the leader's jersey. But we got 642 bonus seconds coming up in the climb after this as well. They're going to play a huge role in this race. Bernal starts to come back though on Groschartner's pace. So Groschartner's just setting a false tempo. Goal is in this group as well for Decathlon Azure. He missed another descent split. But Remco goes for a third time just before a left hand hairpin sprints out of it again. And this time, McNulty doesn't come back. Vlasov, which sits on Schelmosa, bridges across to McNulty. And Remco is pulling and not stopping at this point, despite having Jorgensen in the wheel. McNulty, this is also the other stage. If he doesn't get back here with Jorgensen now pulling, he's never going to come back. This was a really bad sign for him because it's a sign that Jorgensen felt good enough to relay with Avonapol after being attacked three times. And it got even worse if his race wasn't over for GC then when Vlasov uh, eventually attacked across to these two who are going at a rate of knots because there's only three riders that can take those bonus seconds coming up. And if Jorgensen takes six or four and then Vlasov or Remco take two, there's none left for McNulty, and that's his GC over unless he can take bonus seconds at the finish. So Jorgensen in the ideal position. Remco now pulling. Roglic looking a bit suspect with Plap trying to get across to Schelmoza. Vlasov doesn't pull, but to be honest, he wasn't the best on the wet descent anyway. Roglic, though, really starting to struggle after the Cote de Pay. We still got the Coldez coming up. And I don't know, it looked like he, he waved to the car. I don't know if he had a mechanical. The car comes up to him. Initially, they offered him a bid on, but he actually wanted a gilet. Maybe he was saying he was cold. And actually, I would say the quickest gilet application on a descent, no hands in the wet that I've seen for a while. So very deftly done by, by Roglic, but Jorgensen was putting these two under pressure. He knows these rows like the back of his hand, every corner. He's a better technical descender than either of them in, in the wet in particular as well. And he was always making them close the gaps on the descent. But here's the Coldez, and here's where I was surprised because Remco doesn't have to ride anymore. 
McNulty's already way behind. He's not a problem for Remco winning GC. It's Jorgensen that's now the problem for him winning GC because the gap is 1-12. They've ripped it open. But he paces the entirety of Coldez. So I, I dare say after the three attacks he put in on pay, he thought he wasn't going to get rid of Jorgensen. That's the explanation that makes sense from, from how he rode from here on out. And he thought, I'm going to make the race difficult so that I can drop Vlasov and uh, take a stage win potentially. And if that wasn't sure then, it was definitely sure when Jorgensen half attacked or just came out of his wheel to easily take the six bonus seconds. Now in the virtual GC lead, but on that same pinch, Roglic was going backwards. Not the start he would have wanted for Bora Hansgrohe. He would slide to 10th on GC. I don't know if it was the cold or what, but McNulty and Schelmoser went clear at this point. And uh, now is all about... Who would win the stage? Unless Remco could drop McNult, um, Jorgensen on the Cato Chemin, but with Jorgensen having a 34-second lead ahead of Remco, with Remco having paced a lot, it didn't look like that was very likely. And so he went for the stage win, 3.6 Ks, 9%, one of the hardest climbs in the week overall, and Remco went choo-choo mode, setting a hard pace. You could already see Vlasov struggling through the hairpins, losing the wheel. The group came back to McNulty and Schelmoser. Plapp was there, even Scaroni, Felix Gull and Kelderman and Storer and Harper appear out of nowhere. So there's still GC top 10 machinations happening behind, but in front, Nothing really changed. And I don't blame Remco for it either. If he didn't feel he could distance Jorgensen, perhaps he'd even be worried that Jorgensen could counter him if he went again and you can see the pain face on Vlasov behind whilst Remco looks pretty calm and collected and he gets rid of the Russian on Bora Hansgrohe, who did have a good week though. He won a stage, moved up to fifth on GC, was supposed to be here as a domestique for Roglic, even uh, performed in that function in the early stages. But these two go away. Jorgensen. The third, on the way to being the third American to winning Paris Nice. It could have been McNulty, his compatriot behind. And here you see them discussing the stage win. Remco saying, I'll only pull if the stage win is mine. And that seems all okay for the man from Boise, Idaho. So huge win for Jorgensen coming up. He's a resident of the area. He's come top 10 multiple times in this race before. He was really good on this stage last year. But now with the new team, his first stage race with them after a great opening weekend performance from him, he probably can't believe that he's winning the GC of Paranese. Remco takes the stage in the com most combative rider, well-deserved. He tried to animate the race throughout this week, but it just didn't work out on GC. So the two strongest riders in the race cross the line together. No hard feelings between the two Americans. With Avonapol winning the stage, same time Jorgensen. Vlasov on 50 seconds on his own, then Schelmoser led McNulty over the line. But in terms of GC, Jorgensen gets his first line. No better day to get the leader's jersey than not the end of the last stage. Perfect timing. 30 seconds ahead of Renko. McNulty keeps the podium on 147. Schelmoser 222. Then Vlasov moves into fifth, 257. Great performance from Plapp in six on 308. I hope you enjoy the videos. I'm off to Flanders next week. As I said, follow me on Instagram if you want to see updates of that, and I'll see you with Catalonia next. Ciao.